Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School and Scripture and Reflection for Sunday, March 14th, 2021. My name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the Director of Children and Young Families at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church, and welcome. Our scripture reading today, the gospel reading is Luke 12, 13 through 34, and our psalm reading is from Psalm 107. We'll pray, we'll read the uh, passages, and then we'll get started. Gracious and loving Lord, thank you for holding us in the palm of your hand. Thank you for creating a beautiful world for us to live in. Thank you for creating wonderful people to share this world for many, 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 many different kinds of animals and plants and insects and all of the wonderful bits and pieces of the natural world. Help us to truly appreciate all of the things that you have given us, even mosquitoes. Help us today as we study your word, help us to learn the lessons that you laid out for us in these, in these stories. Help us to apply them in our lives here in Gaithersburg and, and wherever the, this is being listened to. Please help us to be the disciples you put us here to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just because I'm kind of a chronological kind of girl, uh, let's start with Psalm, the Psalm. Um, and the Psalm says, Thank the Lord for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind. Now, I think we can all agree that God has done some pretty wonderful things for us. Us as a, as a whole world and each one of us individually. Come back to that. Now, the scripture. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. There I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool, this very night, your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? And so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, about what you will eat, about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed, clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after these things, and your father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you. 
Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. Now, we're going to break that story down a little bit. Jesus told a story about a farmer who was very successful. He had a great farm. His land was making lots and lots and lots of crops, more than he could even store. So the farmer chose to keep all his crops to himself. He thought if he stored up his wealth, he wouldn't have to worry about the future or work for years to come. So he tore down his barns and built a bigger barn for all of his stuff. But then the farmer died before he even had a chance to enjoy all of his enormous savings. He had stored up treasures on earth, but not treasures with God. Jesus goes on to say there is more to life than food and clothing. Jesus knew people often thought so much about what they would eat and what they would wear. They judged others on what they had or didn't have and missed out on other treasures. Jesus told the disciples to consider how the birds and flowers live. What could we possibly learn from the ravens and the lilies? Ravens and lilies don't worry about storing up food. They live for each day and do not worry about the next. They are part of God's creation and do their parts for the ecosystem. Imagine if a raven stored up all of the nuts. What would the squirrels and the chipmunks eat? Imagine if lilies soaked up all of the good nutrients from the soil. How would the other plants grow? Instead, a healthy ecosystem is formed when each creature takes just what they need and leaves what they don't. In this way, the whole system becomes a treasure. If we spend our energy on treasure that will last and trust God for our needs, does it mean that it's wrong to save our resources? No. God wants us to be wise with our money, our privilege, and our property. That's being a good steward. And when we use our privilege, our money, and our property for love and justice, there is less to worry about in the world. We know our community is fed, clothed, sheltered, and loved. So what would have happened if that farmer had given away all of the all of his extra crops, the stuff that he didn't really need for himself and his family. We don't know how many people he could have fed, but it sounds like probably a lot. And what's the worst thing that would have happened? He would have been a farmer again the next year. <laughs> Apparently he's a pretty good farmer. And if he had if he had not, it, okay, he died. We don't know what happened to his crops, but we do know that his intention was not to share them. As opposed to his intention being to share. Um, what kinds of invisible treasures would he have stored up if he had been generous? And what do we mean by invisible treasure? Well, one of the things that we have been talking about and thinking about for the last couple of weeks is how How do we change our focus from worrying first and foremost about ourselves to at least including other people in our worries so that we 
our focus is less on just about ourselves and more about other people. Um, and we talk a lot about sharing money and food and clothing and stuff. And those are all very, very important things. But are those all of the things that you can share? Can you share your time? Can you open up your heart a little bit more and let a couple of more people in? You know, the thing is, when you start opening up your heart and allowing yourself to love more people and to care for more people, your heart just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You're, you, you find that you can make time to do things that you didn't realize you had time to do. Um, and those are the kind of invisible treasures. And yes, it is great. It would, if Jeff Bezos, the guy who is Mr. Amazon, could just give all of his money away, think of all the good that he could do. We were saying this in Sunday school last week, maybe he could, um, pay for everybody, at least everybody in the, in the United States, maybe everybody in the whole world. He's really rich. Um, maybe he could pay for everybody to have all of their COVID vaccines. Um, he could do a lot of good. And that's one kind of, one kind of invisible treasure to, sh to store up. But remember, it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be stuff. It's less about what you're doing and more about why you're doing it. Are you doing it for love? Or are you doing it for a tax write-off? Um, How do you know when it's time to start sharing what you, what you have, including your time and your love? Um, when is enough enough? Well, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend I'm eight years old and I'm going to pretend that I I'm back in school and I go to school from, for argument's sake, from nine to three. And I have an hour of homework every day. And I have a half an hour worth of some kind of chore that I need to do. Maybe I need to walk the dog or I don't know, do the dishes, whatever. Um, and it is very important to my physical and my mental health that I go out and play hard. I need to run. I need to hop and skip and jump and climb and do all that great stuff. Um, and I need to do that for an hour. And I need to be out with my friends. That is important. That's important to my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being that I do those things. But there's still some time left over. What if I took some time away from TV time or uh, gaming time or Lego time, whatever it is you, you know, you, you, that time, like your after dinner time. What if you took that time and maybe you rearranged your schedule a little bit so that a couple of days a week, you and your, maybe you and your mom or you and your older brother or sister or somebody went and talked to the grandma and grandpa type age person that lived next door. Maybe you offered to 
I don't know, rake their leaves, clean up their yard. Maybe you just played checkers with them. You just went and shared time. Um, I don't know. Everybody's going to do these things differently. Everybody's everybody's different. But think about how you can how you can show the people who live in your neighborhood that you love them. I want you to, to think about Eddie, Eddie, my, my dog sees another dog and he does not like other dogs. Um, I want you to think about what your barn is. What, what do you have stored up in your house? Um, maybe you have a great big barn of books or toys or stuffed animals or board games or magazines. Um, and everybody in your house might have their own stash of something. And maybe some of that stuff, Eddie, 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 is I know you're a good boy. He is a good boy. Maybe some of that stuff is stuff you could share. Eddie's not good at sharing. He'll share with me and his dad, but not with other dogs. <laughs> um, but think about some of the stuff that you have collected in your house that you might share that are like the farmer's crops. Um, so um, let's pray and uh, be done. Creator God, you made a world with abundant resources, enough to feed and clothe everyone. Help us to trust you for the future. Help us to use our resources well and become generous people so that everyone will have what they need. Amen. Take good care. I hope you have a great week. I hope you had a great week. I hope you and your families are staying well and staying safe. And it looks like we will be able to be together sooner rather than later. And isn't that just the greatest thing ever? <laughs> um, so take good care. I will see you in virtual space next week. <laughs>